Thanks to the supporters and channel member DC Maximo. Are we calling it a coincidence that Birmingham have offered me an interview on the day Wayne Rooney got sacked by them in real life? Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 18 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we might be leaving Burton. Um, since you were last with me, we have continued our excellent form. By the way, I have switched to a different computer, um, so some of the settings might look a little bit different. After yesterday's episode with the aliens, I've decided to start running the game through my Mac um, rather than through my PC. So some of the stuff might look slightly different. We will tweak it as we go, but fingers crossed through lots of testing, the aliens are gone. So that's a positive. Hopefully the good form doesn't go with them, because as you can see, we continue to play very, very well throughout December so as we hit the start of the January transfer window we are top of the championship which is going to make this upcoming decision a, a tricky one assuming we even get to the point where we have to make the decision so we're top of the championship level on points with Sunderland but of course financially we can't do anything in this transfer window uh, we're not allowed to adjust our but oh hold on well that's interesting because previously, we'd not been allowed to do that. But we are now allowed to... So we can actually make a signing or two. So that does potentially change things. Because one of the things that was making me lean towards very much hearing what Birmingham have got to say was the fact that we were stuck in this situation of being over our wage budget and not being able to adjust it. We have now adjusted it. So we're now top of the championship and have money to spend in January which is very, very tempting. Do want it on record right now. That's my current salary, £4,200 per week, which is obviously a lot less than a typical Premier League salary. And the Premier League is where Birmingham currently hang out. So we're going to go to the interview in a second. This is the situation at Birmingham as it stands currently, though. Club legend Jude Bellingham. Um, is he their biggest legend ever? He played for them for one season. I'm not going to get on with Birmingham fans if I end up going there, am I? Um, but they are currently 15th in the Premier Division, um, which is obviously not the worst position they could possibly be in. Um, did they get promoted last season? Um, if we have a look at their recent record, yeah, so they finished sixth in the Championship last year. What a roller coaster they've been on since the start of non to Legends. So got relegated in 23-24, immediately promoted back up from League One, two years of playoffs in the Championship. They won them last year and are now in the Premier League, not in a relegation spot after more than half of the season played but do find themselves without a manager. What's happened to the previous manager? Previous manager, Stephen Schumacher, sacked after 153 days. So Giovanni Van Bronckhorst had been there three and a half years. He's taken them from League One to the Premier League. He's quite good, apparently. Where did he go? Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is now at Forest, who are in the relegation zone. I don't understand what's going on. Stephen Schumacher, I don't really understand what he's been sacked for when... You would expect Birmingham were in the were in League One three years ago. You would expect them to be favourites to go down. Are they favourites to go down? They are favourites to finish absolutely rock bottom. He's got them to fifteenth, and they've sacked him, which seems insane. Unless they sacked him and they've just got on a little winning run. Okay, they've okay. Now it makes a little bit more sense. They lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games in a row and didn't score in very many of them. Uh, the assistant manager or the caretaker manager has come in and got an away win over Arsenal in his first game in charge, which is what's taken them off the bottom of the table. Okay, does make a little bit more sense now. But on the whole, I imagine this Birmingham job is going to be quite an attractive one. If we look at similarly sized clubs in the Premier League, I mean, Leeds are the next lowest club um, on the predictions. Their manager's earning 21 grand a week. Um, if we look at Forrest, Van Bronckhorst, of course, left Birmingham to go to Forrest, and he's on £52,000 a week. There's probably a pay rise in this for me if I go. And of course the opportunity to not just manage in the Premier League, but stay in the Premier League this season, which, of course, you would expect us to get promoted with Burton this year after the start of the season we've had and being in a position to strengthen. So it really does just come down to my salary, probably. 
maybe. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might not even get offered it yet. Let's go to the interview and see what happens. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm glad you've given me the chance to talk to the club. Let's get down to business. I completely agree. Let's get down to business. Why have you only worked with a small selection of teams so far in your career? I've not had a very long career. I'm a loyal manager. Why do I want to leave my current job after doing so much good work there? I mean, you you called me, Tom. Maybe there's a misunderstanding. You called me. Um, it's time for the next step, and hopefully that can be here. Yeah, I can live with that. Um, we want to ensure that the dressing room atmosphere is much better than it was under our previous manager. I'm happy to make that promise. Our dressing room atmosphere is always pretty good. Um, you'd be potentially replacing someone who did not enjoy a good relationship with our fans. Could I do better? Yes. I'm a local guy, apparently, because once again, this is another job, if you're not in the UK, very geographically close to both Tamworth and Burton. Um, they're all within 45 minutes drive of each other, an hour's drive tops, I would think. I'd have to look at a map if we get the job, but it's another very geographically local job. We're, we're doing non Lethal Legend local edition this year, apparently. We parted company with our last manager much sooner than anybody would have expected. Can you offer assurances that we won't be in for a repeat of that? I have a proven track record. Are you, are you the right manager to lift us from our solid platform and take us to the next level? Yes. Would you be able to take charge straight away or at a later date? See, this is a difficult one because my head says they're not going to give me the job. It's the start of the January transfer window. If I say I'll take over at the end of the season... They're not going to give me the job. And also, there's not a huge amount of logic behind doing that. Although it would be nice to finish the story with Burton and get promoted. If I do that, Birmingham, let's say we do that and Birmingham agree to me coming in at the end of the season, I could find myself in a situation then where Burton are in the Premier League because I've got them there. Birmingham are in the Championship because I wasn't there to save them. And... I end up getting promoted but being stuck in the championship, albeit on more money at a bigger club. Um, but I think, in reality, if there's a big pay rise on the table, the only reason I'm going is a big pay rise, and if there's a big pay rise on the table, why would I delay it for six months? I think is the sensible thing to say. Um, so I'm ready as soon as you need me. Would I be happy to work with the current director of football? Um, he, I mean, he seems fine. Bit weird to have a new gen director of football at a Premier League club at this early in the save, but yeah, I don't mind working with him. Um, I don't necessarily need to bring any staff with me either. And then they would be looking for me to play entertaining, high tempo, defensively solid, direct football. I mean, do I get to make any decisions here, Tom? Goodness me. Uh, work within the wage budget, get rid of the old men, which is my speciality, and then attempt to avoid relegation from the Premier League. So the good old attempt to avoid relegation effectively means. You can get relegated and you're not going to get fired, but try not to. Um, and that pretty much is the goal for the next five years, which for Birmingham is a very sensible goal. If they can just cling on to the Premier League for five years, they'll be in a much healthier position as a club at the end of that than they are currently. So that seems like it makes a lot of sense. If hired, we'd expect you to battle to avoid relegation. Is that fair? Yes, it is. They'd give me £12 million to spend. That seems fine. And a million pounds a week of wage budget. This is why it's a no-brainer if I get offered the job to leave Burton and go to Birmingham because it's just a different financial playing field. It's a much bigger club, a much bigger stadium, obviously with the current Premier League money as well. It is absolutely a, uh, a no-brainer. And now we wait. I've not actually got a game today, I don't think. Yeah, the match isn't until... Derby on Saturday. So it's the Derby Derby on Saturday and then a uh, an FA Cup clash against the team we're joint top of the table with Sunderland. So there's some interesting games to come. I expect if Birmingham haven't lost their minds that they would be looking to offer the job relatively quickly because what's the point in sacking a manager just before the transfer window? and then not giving them the transfer window. So I expect them to want to make an appointment in the next few days. The favourite is this guy, Gerhard Struber, who's currently at Salzburg. So I'm probably not even going to get the job. I kind of want it now, though, I think. Maybe. FM this year just can't be 100% glitch-free. Glitch 
I can't even say it. It's so unlikely to happen, I can't even say it. There's just glitches everywhere. I'm now having a glitch with this screen because no matter how many times I customize it to how I want it to look, um, so I like to have my player stats there, I like to have my team stats there, I like team competitions, and then medical center in there, and then we have finances there. I want the screen to be like that. Oh, well, that's all I've ever needed to do previously. I don't know if there's some magical thing you have to do on Mac to make that save, but now I come off the screen and I go back to it. It's not the end of the world. I might, I mean, we might be slowed. After so many years of resisting, we might, and this is only a might at the moment, we might be drifting slowly towards me actually getting a skin because this isn't any good. This is this, this doesn't have the information I need. So if this is the price we have to pay for the aliens being gone, let me know down in the comments what skins are good and we'll, we'll look into that, I guess. I've always said I don't need one. If this is the screen I've got to work with, I need one. So this is the team for the Derby Derby. Um, we've got Bayich in goal. Ward still not quite fully recovered from his injury. Although to be fair, Bayic has looked good in his absence anyway. So um, it might be that Bayic is now our first choice anyway. He's played 11 games, kept uh, kept six clean sheets, averaging over a seven in that time. We said Bayic would get an opportunity this year to break into the team. He's had it. I think Danny Ward is probably our backup keeper now. Um, then a back four of Skarls, Rojas, Jackson and Deby. Dubai, I still don't know how to say his name. Alonso and Powell in midfield. Stevanovic, Devine, O'Donoghue, then supporting Ross Stewart up front. This is the first time the team has looked like this for a little while because we had quite a few players who we were promising game time to and those promises have just been completed. So Roberts, Clayton, uh, Lieburn, Kitching, um, all these guys who we'd been promising runs in the team to. They've all had their runs in the team now. So you can have a look. Uh, Jack Clayton has played a lot of football now this season. 25 appearances, 11 starts this season already. He's been involved in pretty much every game. It hasn't looked that great either compared to last season. Um, so we now go back to what I think is probably my best team. Um, we've also um, had a little bit of a moan from the Manchester United manager that we weren't using Jackson in the correct role that we agreed to play him in. I don't remember saying we'd play him as a ball-playing defender. I don't usually commit to that kind of thing, but he actually suits the role anyway. So we are going to now play Jackson as a ball-playing defender, and I've got him on a personalised instruction to make sure I don't forget to do that. Because the last thing we want is Jackson to be recalled because I'm playing him in the slightly wrong position. Oh, I don't know what this is. Uh, let's deny whatever that was asking for and hope that doesn't break everything. Like I say, we're potentially going to have teething problems as we get used to playing the game on a different machine. Um, I've had to take the, um, I've had to take the, the zoom down to 95%, which I normally play on a zoom of 125% on this same monitor to make it look exactly like this. Um, but I've had to take it down to 95% instead to be able to fit my six panels in. So I don't know if that will make the difference. Maybe our uh, zooming to 125% was what was causing the problem all along. I don't really know why two different machines on the same monitor would need such vastly different zooms. But it is not my place to question these things. Um, it is my place to hope that the aliens are gone. Like I say, I've tested it a lot, um, but not with this save, because obviously I can't sit and play this save. I did the in-betweeny bits on my laptop like I normally do and they run fine. My, I've got a MacBook Pro as my laptop and it runs fine on there. Uh, this is my Mac Mini that I used to use for editing before I got the supercomputer. Um, so fingers crossed it runs just as well on this as it does on the uh, on the MacBook Pro. But I can't believe we are three months into the game being out and we're still trying to figure out what computer to play it on because it doesn't want to work on my shiny new one. But Hopefully this is the last you ever need to hear me talk about it because if we get through this match without aliens, we can assume the aliens are gone. We've been able to turn the graphics back up to high as well, which is uh, a nice little improvement from yesterday. Um, what we haven't been able to do is stop Derby scoring against us in the Derby Derby. Um, the Derby Derby that they don't realise is a Derby. This is the biggest game of our season not their season it's the biggest game of our season they did beat us early in the year as well we went to their place and lost for a team that are top of the championship at playing it's a team who are mid table in the championship it does seem like this chip on our shoulder we've got about derby does seem to lead them to having our number and i guess there is potential distraction from the fact that obviously i am 
publicly being courted by Birmingham at the moment. So that's going to distract a few uh, a few players, make it a little bit a little bit more difficult to get the, the dressing room behind me on a game like this if they think that I'm potentially on my way out of the door. But at the same time, we've played really well this season and uh, it's not okay to lose twice in our local derby. Our biggest game of our season. I've just realised, looking at that, that our entire back four are here on loan, which is... It's not ideal, is it? If we were looking for reasons to move on from Burton, the prospect of getting into the Premier League and having to sign an entirely new back four just to get ourselves to the level we're at now and then not be able to upgrade anywhere else because of the money we've spent there, there are becoming more and more reasons why a move to Birmingham might be a good thing. We kind of need that offer to come in. Uh, Powell now playing it back to Rojas. We've gone attacking at half time, so we are hopefully going to be able to make a breakthrough in the near future. Powell again slots it through to Divine. Divine is there, and Alfie Divine has. I mean, I'm already awarding him signing of the season. That's his 12th goal of the year. Alfie Divine has been absolutely fantastic. I can't believe when I brought him in that I was making. Kev noises about potentially play him as, playing him as one of the defensive midfielders. I've already done that with Powell, who is much better further forward. And as you can see, really good with a uh, little through ball to Divine there. But Alfie Divine, he's our top scorer this year. He is very much an attacking midfield player, second striker. Um, he's never playing back deep there in the defensive midfield. What do you think this is? We're staying on attacking because we want to go back to the top of the league. We want to impress Birmingham if they're watching. And of course, we want to beat Derby. And there's Oli Scarls with a first game ever for the club. And then he runs off doing the old Soccer AM easy clap above his head, which I can't do in a suit. The shoulder pads mean my arms don't go beyond there. That's... Uh, Get a suit that's the right size. It's just been Christmas. Don't be so rude. Uh, Stuart played it across to Skiles, and I think that is my cue to drop back to the positive mentality and look into making a couple of substitutions. Um, Stevanovic, his first start for a while, not played very well. Absolutely the same from O'Donoghue. Some of these guys who had been out of the team for a little while haven't come back in and immediately started playing. Well, right, this substitution, we now do this slightly differently. We don't play Chambers Shaw in midfield. We've actually been putting Skiles there as a ball-winning midfielder and then having Chambers Shaw as an inverted wing-back to make that a three. What we then sometimes do is move Jackson to right-back as an inverted full-back as well. Uh, we won't do that change immediately, but that is potentially in our future. Um, I hope Manchester United and I'm watching and realising I'm playing him out of position again but it kind of gives us a nice little back three defensive midfield three we're like a three 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 one when we do that and it does work quite nice ego we're going to do it now we're going to hope Manchester United aren't watching we stick him out there and then we do that and that that looks nice when it's in full flow it works really really well and then for my final trick um, we're going to bring on Luke Harris Joe Gelhart probably on his way out of the club on loan this month one of a few players who hasn't really got the opportunity to get into the team yet um, and will probably be moving on might even look to sell Gelhart because he's a little bit old a little bit old to be going out on loan um, Luke Harris I mean they're, they're both affected by the fact that we signed Divine at the same time as the two of them and it was three players vying for one spot and Alfie Devine has very much made it his own so those two are always going to struggle a little bit to find game time and I don't think we necessarily need three players for that role Derby on the attack here as we enter the final few moments of the match and that's upsetting to me especially because he's beaten Jackson in the air you would think moving a centre back out to right back makes it less likely that's going to happen. I don't think we can blame Chambers Shaw for what's gone on here. He's actually covered quite well, pushed the pushed the uh, attacker wide. I don't think you can fault his defending there, but for Jackson to be beaten in the air, that's we kind of make the change to stop that from happening. And then it goes and happens. We're going attacking again. Uh, we're going to offer some encouragement if we've got time to do it. Powell with the long throw. Clayton can't get it under control. And now Derby. I've got another counter-attack in there. One-on-one -on -one with us here. Skulls has done really, really well to uh, to just muscle the Derby player off the ball. And now Rojas playing it forward to Clayton. Jackson in that right-back position. Now look away now, Manchester United. Plays the ball over the top. It's a, a very over-hit ball that Harris looked to chase but never really had a chance to get anywhere near it. And uh, the ball ends up comfortably in the hands of the Derby goalkeeper as we enter the final couple of moments of this time added on. Chambers Shaw has been beaten in the air there. Not really a defender, is he? But he's also not really a midfielder. 
Is he a winger? Well, we've got to work out what Chambers Shaw is. I like him, but he doesn't necessarily fit into the team anywhere. And that's very frustrating that we've gone from 2-1 up. Fiddled because I'm fancy. And I, I'm not just fiddling because you lot here. I've been doing that fiddling a lot. It works well normally. Um, but we have thrown the game away against Derby and we are not top of the league anymore. I hope Manchester United and Birmingham were both looking away as that went on. Right, I think my plan from here, I want to resolve the Birmingham situation in today's episode, but I'm conscious we're already quite long, so we're probably not going to do a second match today. What I'm going to do is just keep playing, keep doing transfer window stuff, and once the Birmingham job is resolved one way or the other, I'll let you know, and that'll be how we end the episode. Um, they're back down in the relegation zone. They need to make a decision soon. I, I'm much less likely to go if they offer me the job on the the 29th of January. Because what can you do going in then? It's there's I need to, I need a couple of weeks to do a transfer window, or else I'm literally just going in to take a relegation, and I don't need that on my CV. Well, after all that, I didn't get the job. I'm a bit I'm a bit disappointed. Especially because our form has absolutely taken a nosedive while it's been going on as well. Not only did we lose to Derby, as you saw, we got knocked out of the FA Cup by Sunderland, got re beaten very comfortably by Reading in the league. Um, so we've uh, we've dropped down to second place. We have broken our transfer record um, because, you know, I wanted to break the transfer record before I left. So Gabriel Vidovic um, has joined Croatian International. Two caps for Croatia at 24 years old. And he's joined for £900,000 from Wolfsburg. He can play anywhere in the midfield of the, or the attack. Very useful uh, player, especially because there's going to be some of our other players in those areas moving out of the club. We already know Zvonarak went to Reading. Uh, we sold him, um, even though we, we broke him, which amuses me greatly. Kingsley Aziz has gone to Wigan on loan to get some game time down in League One. Alex Jimenez, um, the right back who came in from Real Madrid, has gone to Rotherham to hope to get some game time in League One. Toby Oakes left the club on a free transfer. He came for our youth team, but never really looked good enough to play for us. And hopefully, also on the way out, Joe Gelhart is currently under offer. We're trying to get uh, Wilson Esbrand out of the club on loan as well um, and we're also trying to bring in a new defender on loan from Manchester United just to keep the the production line of low knee defenders going because you know that's that's the most important thing so fingers crossed that guy uh, will be joining us on loan as well but he'll be joining us here at Burton because I guess we're sticking here for the season now, which doesn't need to be a sad thing. I imagine most of you are delighted because we're now in a real trance of actually getting a promotion to the Premier League and all that might come with it. One thing I do just want to check. Let's have a little look at what I could have won. How much is he earning? More than 10 times what I'm earning. Imagine, imagine what we could have bought for £45,000. Oh, my word. Tomorrow, hopefully, we're back to winning ways and alien free. It's all positive. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments as well what skins to look at because this situation is already annoying me. Also, if anyone knows how to stop the pointer going big when you move it quickly, I guess that's a Mac thing. But if I move the pointer really quickly, it goes really big and it's really weird. So... I need to turn that off as well. Don't know how to do that. Let me know down in the comments section. But if you did enjoy that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.